Hey everyone, and welcome to this webinar talking about thermal analysis using SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS has two tools that are used to do thermal analysis. The first one, the FEA tool, is called SOLIDWORKS Simulation, specifically the Simulation Pro. Um, and the second uh, tool is called SOLIDWORKS Flow, which is their CFD product. My name is Andrew Smith. I'm an application engineer and simulation specialist here at Go Engineer. And I'm really excited to be here. We at GoEngineer are really excited about helping our customers identify the best ways to save time and money with their designs. And a lot of times simulation is a way to take a lot of the guesswork and initial prototyping out and replace it with much better solutions right off the bat. So let's talk about thermal analysis. Uh, heat transfers in three ways, conduction, convection, and radiation. And the analysis and thermal analysis is basically looking at the way that that heat transfers through a part. To review, conduction is simply the way that heat transfers through solids. So that can ha happen if you have a part that's hot on one side and cold on the other, and you can see heat transferring through it. Or if you have a hot part that comes in contact with the cold part, as shown in this GIF, you can see the heat transferring from the hot body into the cold body. The second way that heat can transfer is through convection. The convection is the way that heat transfers from a solid to a fluid. There's two types of convection. There's natural convection, which is shown here, which is where the fluid is able to, or excuse me, the heat is able to be transferred from the hot body into the cooler fluid. That cooler fluid, when it gets warmer, it expands typically and is able to rise because of its increased buoyancy. Uh, as it rises, it pulls cooler air up behind it, which is then also heated and you get a natural cycle. Uh, Force convection would be a case in which the there's a fan simply pushing this fluid over the top body. The last method is radiation, uh, which is essentially light being transferred, excuse me, heat being transferred via light. So here we have a hot element that's cooling or that's heating up a cold element, and that can happen across a vacuum or not vacuum. So we have these three methods of heat transfer, and, and we let's we've designed a part. We want to know how it's going to go. These are the things we got to consider, and now we have to look at how the tools do that. So again, with SOLIDWORKS has two tools to do that. The FEA tool, which uh, I've shown an example here of that. This is a simple bending of a beam. And then the CFD tool. And here I have it showing just a, a simple like heat exchanger um, cycle. And again, I want to emphasize, if I say CFD, that's the, that SOLIDWORKS flow is the CFD tool. If I say SOLIDWORKS sim, I'm referring to the FEA tool. And I'll often use those, the terms interchangeably, so I'll say FEA instead of solid sim or vice versa. Uh, but uh, hopefully this explains what I mean <laughs> throughout the rest of this. So I have a, a pair of examples. So the first example is this pipe over here. I just have a cross section of it. Essentially, it's a pipe that's made of two materials. And in the inside of this material, we have a very, very hot flow. Um, it's air at 300 degrees Celsius. And on the outside, we have very cold air uh, that's blowing at about 100 miles an hour at minus 120 Celsius. There are a few examples of uh, blast freezers that operate at these kind of temperatures. And basically, uh, you know, we have some mad scientists trying to cool down this fluid really quick, wants to know if this pipe is going to be sufficient. The second example I have is this ESC. Um, ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller, and those are typically found on RC aircraft and cars. Um, I'm going to refer to it from the standpoint of an RC aircraft, probably the rest of this webinar. Um, but the idea is that on the back side of this uh, heat sink, you're going to have a bunch of electronics, and those electronics should be generating a ton of heat. And we need to get rid of that heat so those parts don't melt and, uh, and destroy themselves so that the machine will continue to function. So we're going to look at some design aspects of that. This is to simulate an RC aircraft that's flying at um, about 100 miles an hour, which is pretty fast for an RC aircraft, but there are those that do that. And so we're going to be considering that and various design considerations for that. So let me, um, let me go to SOLIDWORKS right now. A couple things I want to point out really quick about the SOLIDWORKS situation. Number one, it's super easy to use. If you've used SOLIDWORKS before, it's not very hard to get uh, educated and, and, and rolling on using either of these thermal tools. 
The other thing about SOLIDWORKS is that it's fully integrated. So the simulation tools aren't separate. I don't have to export a part from SOLIDWORKS into another tool. I just continue to use my SOLIDWORKS. And all I have to do to get that to work is choose my add-in. So in this case, you can see I have my SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in already ready to go and my SOLIDWORKS flow simulation add-in both already in my SOLIDWORKS ready to go. And that's another thing that's really awesome is I can use both of these at the same time. I don't have to close one, open the other. I can be doing sort of FEA results, FEA studies on one, and CFD studies at the same time on the same part in the same window. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about the FEA tool here. So here in SimPro, I have this thermal study. And to access that, I click on my simulation tab, new study, and select the thermal study here. So here I have my thermal study ready to go. Um, a couple things I want to point out with the, with the FEA study on thermal analysis is, first of all, when I apply loads for temperatures, I don't have a ton of options, and that's fine. One of the things I'd like to point out that's really important, though, is that convection in the FEA solver is an input, not a result. So if you happen to know some parameters about your design, like you know it's temperature and you know it's, uh, you know, the airspeed around it or whatever, and you happen to know exactly the geometry, a lot of times you can approximate the convection, and in which case the FEA tool would be sufficient. But oftentimes you don't. And if the case is uh, outside of the norm, for example, if you have a, a cylinder that's maybe bent or has a kink in it or something, the flow is not quite regular, or if you have a turbulent, something that's causing uh, eddies to form upstream from the, from the pipe that you're looking at, the convection coefficient will not be easily calculatable, uh, in which case it's going to be hard to enter the value here of um, how much convection is going to be coming off of this. Uh, in this case, I did a, a pretty quick hand calc to find out the convection coefficient, and it came out to about 100 watts per meter squared Kelvin, um, give or take. Again, it was pretty rough, um, but um, we'll see later on that with the, F, with the CFD tool, it, it gets a little bit validated. Now, the setup's pretty simple, the running's pretty simple, and it all works pretty good. Um, and then if I want to switch over to the CFD tool, um, this is one I've already created, but it's really easy. I just I can go over to the flow simulation and follow the wizard to create a new one. Um, but it's sort of similar, except for in this case, I don't have to input all the, uh, the convection coefficient. All I do is I input the initial temperature of the inside, and then I create um, the initial conditions on the outside, which show that high-speed wind at those cold temperatures. And it's able to calculate the convection coefficient for me, and I can actually have that as a criteria that I use to solve the study. So here I have my average heat transfer coefficient on the outside face. So that both gives me the um, that gives me the convection coefficient as it's uh, simulated, and that's that's really powerful. So that's kind of the basic setup. Both of these uh, I've run previously, and, I, and I'll show you the results back in PowerPoint here. Um, so let's, let's move with that. So here, here's the FEA results from the FEA study. Again, it, I got one temperature on the inside, and then I just say convection's happening on the outside, and this is what it does for me. That gives me a uniform symmetric heat transfer or heat movement through that. So you can see the temperature distribution's uh, really regular here. And that's what you expect because it's assuming that the heat is transferring off the outside face the same temperature, at the same rate on all, all parts. Um, and then I here, have here the FEA stress results. And one thing I'd like to point out before I talk about those too much is it's really easy in either the FEA studies or the CFD studies to transfer those thermal loads into a stress study and be able to calculate the stresses from those thermal loads. So if that's what I did here, just transfer those over and got these FEA stress results. The thing I'd want to point out here is this dark reddish brown color is actually the FEA stress results with the yield strength limit um, shown in that dark red. And the idea here is that this shows that these parts both fail uh, in a lot of places at these 
thermal loads. So from designing this part, you know, I'm like, ah, this, I got to do something better. This doesn't work. My math science isn't good enough. Uh, now, here's a comparison between the FEA and the CFD tools. The FEA tool, again, you can see that uniform heat distribution. That's uh, fine, but it's not realistic. You can imagine if cold air is blown across this pipe, you're going to have one section that's very cold and one section that's not as cold as we see in the CFD. So again, we have basically cool air blowing from this side, and then as it wraps around, we get less cooling. So we have lots of, lots of cooling on the front and then less cooling in the back. The other thing is that we found out that the heat transfer coefficient using the simulation tool is about 70 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So I feel pretty good about my hand calcs being close, um, but if I'm really caring about that accuracy, that result, that, that FEA, the CFD tool really gave me better answers. Now let's talk about the heat sink in the CFT situation. So here we have again, 45 meters per second wind coming in on this uh, heat sink. And then we have our electronic heat source on the back. Uh, the first thing I wanna point out is the kind of interesting behavior. This is again, the temperature of the heat sink. And you can see we have really cold sections and less cold sections. And that's a good thing to to notice about the CFD tools is we don't have uniform cooling because of this heat sink. We have actually spots that are gonna be much cooler than others. And we may really care about that, especially about complex electronics. We might make choices about which side we put some of these pieces on so that they cool better. And then I compare that with the FEA thermal results. And we can see that again, we have sort of a cross-sectionally uniform um, heat distribution, uh, which you know, they come out to, you know, I can see these are similar and that, that I'm having similar results, but obviously the FEA thermal results have some uniformity that's not true to life. We're not getting cooling all the way through it exactly how you would in real life. And furthermore, the FEA stress results don't show anything significant. So we don't, you know, thermal expansion is not really a critical issue here. Um, and so we don't have to, you know, use an FEA study maybe is not the ideal solution for us this case. One other thing I want to point out with this is with the CFD tool, I have the ability to vary some of these parameters. Now I have equations. I can go back to my undergraduate heat transfer textbook. I can pull in, I can pull those equations from that book and I can say, oh, I have a bank of fins, the rectangular fins, and I can do the math to find the heat transfer coefficient. However, that assumes that the flow is going exactly perpendicular to this. And in certain cases, you may have a heat sink that's not oriented so that it's always hitting, you know, oncoming flow. And one of the things that CFD is really powerful doing is this type of behavior. So here I have the wind vector changing. This is again, the 45 meters per second wind. And you can see how the heat sink heats up significantly when the wind is, you know, past a certain point. Um, and that's a really, could be a really critical design consideration if you're designing heat sinks or where to put your heat sink on your vehicle. And so that's a really powerful thing that CFD does that uh, the FEA tool would struggle to do. And in fact, we'd have to do that hand calcs to find the co convection coefficient. We can't do that for some of these odd angles, not easily at least. So, So I have this list, why should I choose CFD if I already have the FEA tool? And uh, I kind of went through this, but what I'm gonna do instead is uh, we're gonna look at this flow chart. So this is basically, should I choose CFD or FEA? And I have this flow chart ready to go. So again, we're gonna start with the pipe bands of these two constructed pipes. And we're gonna say, okay, I know I need to design this pipe. What tool should I use? Should I use the SCFD tool, the SOLIDWORKS flow tool? or the FEA tool or solid sim. So are we doing a thermal analysis? Yes, otherwise this is the wrong flow chart. We need to go somewhere else. So, Next question, does my product contain any of the following features? Does it have fans, PCBs, cooling or heating circuits, or is it a lighting system? In this case, no, it's a pipe. It's a composite pipe with two parts. So uh, the answer is no here. The next question is, uh, am I going to be performing many or complex thermal analyses? In this case, the answer arguably is yes. But for the sake of uh, argument, for the sake of being able to show you how this flowchart could work, 
let's say no. It's pretty simple, you know, I, I don't need to do a lot of these. I only do it a couple times before I, I get results I can trust or whatever. So the next question is, could convection or radiation affect performance? And the answer is yes. Convection is really critical, actually. So the next question is, can I accurately predict heat transfer or can I ignore heat transfer from convection and radiation? Uh, if the answer is yes, and I can accurately predict the, the heat transfer over a cylinder, I have the next question is, is thermal expansion important? And if the answer is yes, then I would consider both. So the idea here is I probably could go with the FEA tool if I wasn't doing a lot, but if I need a lot of, to do a lot of these studies, or if I'm really considering the accuracy, I probably need the CFD tool. And if, if thermal expansion stress from thermal loads matters, then I also, I need the FEA tool. So, you know, you gotta, gotta look at that. So now let's consider the heat sink. So again, the question is, do I want the CFD tool or the FEA tool? Am I doing a thermal analysis? Yeah, we already, we already went through that. We should be. Does my product contain any of the following features? Fans, PCBs, cooling heat circuits, light system. When I'm looking at just this heat sink, the answer is no. But the truth is that if I'm designing an ESC or even designing the heat sink that would be attached to the ESC, I really care about the heating circuit that's on the other side. The secret, it's going to be creating a lot of heat. And uh, so really the answer should be yes. Again, for the sake of demonstrating the flow chart, we're going to say no. That's kind of a fib, but it's okay. Um, are we going to be performing many or complex thermal analyses? Uh, we'll say no. Again, I'm going to want to model those heat sources on the back. So the answer really ought to be yes here, but we'll say no. We want to show off this flow chart as much as possible. Um, so the next question, could convection or radiation affect performance? Yes. Can I ignore or accurately predict heat transfer convec from convection radiation? I, I can't. Unless I know for sure I'm going straight on all the time, I'm going to need, I'm going to need results that are better than the hand calcs I can do if that flows anything besides straight on at zero degrees. So is thermal expansion important? In this case, the answer is no. And so I go straight, I, I don't really care about the thermal expansion, I don't care about the stresses. I, I really care about the heat transfer. CFD is the right tool for this. I want to go with solid waste flow. So here's that flow chart again. Um, yeah, there you have it. I, I just want to thank everybody for, for being here, for watching the video. Um, both these thermal analysis tools are really good and uh, could really benefit you. Um, the CFD tool has some capabilities that the FEA tool doesn't, but both are able to translate that thermal load into a static study if you need. Um, so we have two great tools here and, and hopefully this helps you make a decision about which one will best help you and your business and help you save time and money moving forward. So thank you again so much for showing up and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks.